Thank you. And Daniel Flynn with Breitbart Sports, please go ahead. Question for Kat and Rhonda. Uh, first, Kat and Rhonda. Uh, we see Rhonda in the swimsuit issue, Sports Illustrated. She's on Verizon commercials. She's writing an autobiography. She's even got going to be in the Entourage movie coming out. Kat, do you think your opponent may be overlooking you with all of these extracurricular activities? And for Rhonda, you said that you wanted to, to make 2015 your bitch's bitch. Is there, is there a chance that maybe, tw- you know, that, that uh, the thing that you're making your bitch will make, you know, will, will, will basically uh, enslave you uh, and, and hurt you in, in, in pursuit of the primary goal, which is, which is MMA? Um, wait, what was your question? <laughs> All the distractions, the swimsuit issue, the Verizon commercial, the autobiography, the movies, all the, all that is there. You said you wanted to make this year your bitch, but it, but is there a, a danger that all this is going to make you its bitch? You know that, that basically you're going to lose sight of the, the focus on MMA with all this other stuff in, 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 uh, that you're doing. You said you wanted cat to answer first. Yeah, yeah, you said you wanted cat first, and then but that was not. I, well, in my opinion, I think, you know, I mean, it, it seems like she's motivated and driven and, and, you know, doesn't need much idle time. And so she goes and accomplishes things. That's, that's what it seems like to me. You know, when I set out to try and do things that people say are impossible, first they ask me why I do it. And then after I accomplish it, they ask me how I did it. And the reason why you doubt the ability that it could ever be done is the reason why you will never do anything that great. So question on, on women's MMA, there've been doubters. Dana White at one time was a doubter. And one of the ways that the doubters have been converted to, you know, enthusiasts of women's MMA MMA is that it's been on, you know, that that it's been included on the male cards. For instance, the the Misha Tate uh, Ron to the second fight, a lot of people were won over by that fight. Is there a danger that you have um, uh, headlining, you know, the two headlining bouts, women's bouts, that's just going to throw off a lot of a lot of fans who might otherwise buy um, buy a, a card. Do you think this is a blessing for women's MMA or a curse that you have women at the top of the card? In other words, is it something that that you guys might actually be harmed by because the pay-per-view buys may not be what they would be uh, if you had you know uh, men headlining the card. Is it to everybody? To everyone. Anyone take a shot. <laughs> well, I think it's a it's a great opportunity to be able to prove something. But otherwise, you know, it's, it is what it is. There's There was 46 UFC events last year, you know, and I think that's something like 20 to 30% more than they ever did the year before that. And this is not an event-by-event event company or endeavor, you know, this is, they're looking at the entire fight as a whole. And there's a lot of factors that, that affect pay-per-view, but you know what? I think that this card is going to perform extremely well. And compared to the guys, I I think it's going to hang in there and be respectable. And that's why they have enough faith to put us in there. You know, the UFC has been around for more than 20 years. They know how this business works and they're not going to put together a card like this and they think it's going to fail. Anyone else want to take a shot? Uh, I'd have to agree with Rhonda. I mean, us women, we go out there and we've already approved enough. Um, women's MMA has come a really long way. And in my opinion, I mean, just from the people I talk to or the responses that I get and the responses that I see from multiple people just everywhere, I mean, people look forward to us fighting. They get excited when you can have a fight card full of male fights, but yet when that women's fight comes on, I mean, that's what people want. They're super excited by it. So uh, I have to agree. I mean, I think that UFC was smart with the choice that they're making and all of us girls are going to go out there and do what we do and prove why we're out there. It'll be exciting. And people even asking this question, it really proves that the inequality still exists. I mean, that they, if they put up a, a men's 125-pound main and co-main event, people wouldn't be asking the question like, oh, if this doesn't sell very well, we might just get rid of the whole men's division. You know, why are we still even asking this question? Do you, what, do you remember the last time you asked that question to a guy? Well, I, I wouldn't because, you know, MMA is, is sort of a niche sport. And then within MMA, the women's thing for a lot of fighters, for a lot of fans, 
whether you like it or not, it's, it's a turnoff for, for certain guys. Now, that may be a bad thing that it's a turnoff, but it's a reality, and I just want to get you guys to respond to that reality. I am responding, and you know what? Lighter divisions are a turnoff to some people, but you don't ask them about that, like, oh, well, people don't just want to see heavyweights, da 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 Well, I, I, you know? I actually have, I actually have, I actually have that. Your, your kind of opinion is the thing that we're starting to change. You are what we need to change about this culture. I actually asked a question about the lighter weights to Benson Henderson last, uh, last month, so I have actually asked that question. 